So I actually shot the video of modifying this uh, Linksys WRT55AG way back in probably September in my uh, old workshop but uh, I actually never released this video because in the video I got a couple of things wrong mainly to do with the dates of when this was manufactured um, when I actually went away and did my homework after shooting the video it turns out this product was actually made in 2003 which um, for the time you know a, a dual band router like this you know it really was cutting edge at the time and uh, probably why it was so expensive when it was released but um, you know in 2003 that's when Cisco actually uh, bought out Linksys and uh, took over the name so probably this router was um, you know completely manufactured by the old Linksys team and uh, it was just Cisco who uh, released it because it was in the pipeline to be released so um, you know although in the video I did say it's probably Cisco taking over which probably uh, you know messed the design of this up I have to say it was probably the uh, Linksys team that uh, actually uh, designed it by looking at the dates as when uh, when it was actually made so because this actually turned out to be uh, such a good modification and really really uplifted this product and turned it into the uh, product that it should have been at the uh, date of its release and you can see here in the uh, top of the screen there how it actually performs when I've got it sat side by side with my test router. My test router is no slouch it really is uh, you know not a bad little router my test router with uh, external antennas just like this has but um, it really is uh, powerful and it's kicking out those signals much better than my test router so I think it's a worthwhile video so I hope you enjoy it and please remember I did get the dates wrong but um, you know I should uh, actually do a bit more reading before I shoot a video but there you go. So something uh, a little bit different today I'm going to modify a router that's not um, belonging to any of the uh, major broadband providers in the UK. This is a uh, Linksys WRT55AG dual band router and I believe this was released in 2007-2008 uh, and uh, one of the reasons I bought this and uh, I actually won it for just £2 and uh, free shipping as well I was surprised the uh, seller actually sent it sometimes when I win things that cheap and it's free shipping they uh, tend not to send them but uh, one of the reasons I got it so cheap is because this was a major flop when it was released it was uh, not exactly a cheap router and um, the problem with this is it gets extremely hot and it reboots itself and it doesn't take a long time to get hot either it um, you know you can have it powered on for just 10 minutes and it'll end up rebooting itself even worse than that if you have uh, a couple of uh, computers connected to this wirelessly it gets so hot and uh, just reboots like I say so it's uh, basically um, a uh, poor design and it was a uh, major flop for Cisco and of course this router is by uh, Cisco it's uh, not by Linksys as such, they purchased the name Linksys uh, quite a few years ago now. So one of the reasons I purchased this router is not to actually use it on my home network, I purchased this to actually use it as a test router and uh, because it is dual band I can uh, use this and test my 2.4 gigahertz antennas and test my 5 gigahertz antennas and uh, what I'm thinking is because there is a lot of space inside here because it's uh, kept this classic form factor I could uh, possibly add an internal battery pack to this and um, have a charging port on the side just to make it uh, um, you know a uh, single unit where I'm not uh, trying to find uh, external battery packs to actually plug in at the back here and although it does keep the same form factor as the classic Linksys routers these um, antennas are fixed so I'm going to have to uh, change those out and put some probably SMA connectors here on the back so as you can see I've got the main motherboard out of the router now and this here is the chip that gets extremely hot it's an Afros chipset and by the way this is the version 2 of this router the version 2 will not run open uh, WRT or anything like that but uh, I do believe the version 1 did so uh, if you wanting to get one of these I'd, I would track down the version 1 I may keep an eye out for one myself so this router should never have been sold without a heatsink on top of this chip if you actually look at the specs of this chip online it does actually um, advise that you do need a heatsink so I don't know what they did here just uh, leaving it um, all naked like that without a uh, heatsink on top really is bad design 
But what's really interesting about this router now, since getting uh, this board out, is you've got your 2.4 gigahertz chips under here and your 5 gigahertz under this can here. But uh, the actual high rose connectors for the antennas for the 5 gigahertz are unpopulated. They're actually there, ready to be soldered on. But uh, to save money, I think what they've actually done is connected this uh, the trace to the antennas here directly to the... Um, Kairos connectors for the uh, 2.4 and just send both signals down the same coax just to save money. Here is the uh, actual Hyros connector for one of the uh, antennas on the uh, back of the case. And uh, what I'm actually going to do, or if I can, I'm going to try and trace back where they're connected and sever that connection and then um, actually repopulate these so we've got uh, separate 5 gigahertz antennas to the 2.4 gigahertz I'm not sure if i can do that yet but that's what i'm hoping to do and also as well as putting the heat sink on here what i'm thinking about doing is putting a small fan in there as well just to keep it really cool so it turns out i was wrong this uh, chipset here is for the 5 gigahertz and this one is the 2.4 and it's the 2.4 that's tied in to the uh, same antennas of the 5 gigahertz not the other way around so I want to uh, find out where uh, this is connected and sever that connection so we can re-enable these for the 2.4 gigahertz and leave those for the 5 gigahertz on their own so if we look at where the signal comes out of the 2.4 gigahertz chip here the two side legs carry the uh, main signal out along these tracers it goes through this small capacitor here and into these two planes here and I think what's going off here is the signal is being attenuated slightly in order to be carried along the trace to the actual uh, coax and then onto the antenna but if we follow this trace down here and along here this is where the trace comes out to these unpopulated pads here now what would normally be in this uh, space here would be a uh, small capacitor and it would bridge those two connections in order to send the signal out here but because uh, this design doesn't do that and it goes off to mix into the uh, 5 gigahertz signal so it can go out through the one antenna they uh, haven't used this but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to break the connection here to these two ground planes and then connect a small piece of copper wire to this connection here and this connection here to run it all the way down here and then I'm actually just going to bridge that with a piece of copper wire I haven't got a uh, capacitor small enough but it shouldn't make much difference so uh, we've actually got a trace coming out then along here through that bridge and then we can re-enable these uh, pads here and these will be our ground plane and that will be our main signal so I can actually solder on a piece of coax and then out to a uh, BNC connector or sorry a bulkhead SMA connector so we can then attach some 2.4 gigahertz antennas to that and then we're not mixing the signal in with the 5 gigahertz signal on the other side so I've modified one side of the chip and I gave up on trying to separate that trace there you can see it looks quite messy under the macro lens but you, you would struggle to see it with the naked eye and what I've actually done is got a piece of wire and desoldered that little capacitor off there and uh, actually just soldered to that side of the pad and then uh, this wire here actually links in and uh, solders to this side of this uh, antenna pad here so this is now active and uh, it's uh, now separated from the 5 gigahertz um, actual uh, antenna pad so it's now uh, working independently on its own so it should perform a lot better and as for that wire I uh, used some of the coax from a laptop antenna and I just used that uh, centre part of the actual coax so it's really really small so I've desoldered the capacitor off this side now and I'm going to do the same on this side solder onto that pad there and lead it through and solder onto that pad there so both of those antenna pads are now enabled again and of course it's now separated from the 5 gigahertz signal so uh, these are now working independently so it should work a lot better and there's my finger in the shot so you can actually see just how small this actually is so as for a heatsink for this what I've uh, actually got here is a really old Netgear router from around 2005 and I'm just going to pop that heatsink off there and transplant it onto this one and I'm also 
going to put this fan about there so it can blow some air going across the, that heat sink as well and this is a uh, 5 volt fan but uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to tie it into one of these voltage regulators here that uh, outputs about 3.5 volts so running at 3.5 volts instead of 5 volts it should be really really quiet and uh, should give uh, still quite a blast of air over that um, heat sink there so it should make things run a lot cooler and also I don't have to modify the outside of the case at all because uh, both sides top and bottom I've got um, these air holes here so vents so the air can circulate so I've tied the fan in to this voltage regulator here that kicks out just under 3 volts so this 5 volt fan should now run a lot quieter and uh, still give us some nice airflow over that heat sink and as for the heat sink that's just held in place with the actual solder paste itself just um, put some solder paste on there, a nice thin layer and then uh, squash down the actual heat sink and uh, that's in there, it's quite solid and of course once we start getting some heat in there as well it'll uh, really set quite hard there's no need to have any other kind of mechanism holding that down like springs or anything like that like you would a processor on a computer for instance now to hold the fan in place I've got uh, some double sided foam tape here so what I've done is cut it into some thin strips like this and I want to lay these strips in between the actual breathing holes on this uh, actual shield in here because I don't want to block any of those up because they are there for a reason and that's to dissipate heat from uh, the chips underneath here so some thin strips in between there and that should be strong enough to hold this fan down in place so the fans installed and it's actually running now I've got power to the router and uh, as you can probably hear it's really really quiet because it's uh, running at a reduced voltage and we've got some airflow coming over the top of that heat sink now so I don't think we're going to have any more problems with heat with this router so now I'm going to actually fit the uh, bulkhead SMA connectors now I've got these that actually come pre already crimped especially with the high rose connector at one end so I can keep those two high rose connectors in place and uh, just use one of these if I didn't have those I would probably desolder these high rose connectors get some normal coax and uh, solder directly onto the board like I'm going to have to with these two uh, antenna connectors here that I've now enabled so as for mounting these into the case itself I've just um, sanded down flat the actual uh, flange that held the original antennas and I'm going to have to epoxy these in place because um, unfortunately that hole is a little bit too big to take these connectors but it shouldn't be a problem if I epoxy that in place there and for the extra two connectors that we're now going to have because we've now got four antennas I'm going to drill holes through here and here on these two legs if you will and uh, have those coming up through there and actually uh, fit that in place with a uh, locking nut that comes with one of these so it should look uh, quite good after I've finished you should have uh, two antennas coming out the back here and two antennas at the top here so you'll have the uh, 5 gigahertz antennas here at the back and the 2.4 gigahertz here at the uh, top and also when you're doing something like this you want to make sure that you're using quite lengthy lengths of coax especially where you're actually going to solder them on the, uh, these new pads here because you don't want to take the lid off and then accidentally rip the uh, coax from the solder points because uh, it was a little bit too short and that's the reason why I've used a uh, different uh, connector here with some uh, slightly longer coax because the connector I was going to use was a little bit too short and it was going to be too tight so this one's quite long so we've got plenty of room in there to actually take the lid off and uh, get in there and do some maintenance if we have to do in the future so I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, how I turned this uh, well it was really a flop at the time of its release and like I said it cost uh, a lot of money I think it was uh, somewhere in about uh, $180 but uh, with these few modifications, modifications to the heat problem and modifications to the antennas, splitting those antennas up so we've now got um, direct 5 gigahertz antennas and direct 2.4 they're not mixing it at all on the line so you know it should perform a lot better now and again with that heat then uh, it shouldn't uh, reboot all the time so we've got ourselves a router that um, this really should have been when it was released especially for that price point and of course it's just a shame that it's the version 2 so I can't put any custom firmware on it but uh, 
I will keep an eye out for the, for the uh, version 1, especially if I can get it as cheap as I got this one. So if you did enjoy this, please give it a uh, thumbs up. It really does help, and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one.